Hello, viewers. I'm SB. Amabel. It's me. There you go. There's the rest of them. Uh, and welcome back to Amabel Goes to 4X School, this part where we're playing Endless Legend. Uh, a lot of things happened kind of in real quick succession at the end of that last episode. We have made an awful lot of money here in the longest dust eclipse in the planet's history. We are almost certainly just about to uh, just about to see winter fall. Uh, we are also in possession of an urchin. Got ourselves a, a a kaiju all of our own. So let's take a second to look at the abilities that are that are theoretically available here. We picked up Dust Leecher real quick. This is an obvious win. Uh, neighboring regions produce neighboring friendly regions produce plus twenty percent dust. Obviously fantastic, especially since we're able to put him down in a place where he's adjacent to all three of our existing cities. Uh, the other abilities that we can we can purchase here, and we we do now have the die for any of these, and we have a little bit of die production from a fortress, so we'll be able to buy them both eventually if we want to. Um, this one, while the Urken is in army form, allied units in the same region have bonus attack and damage. Uh, he imbues them with his berserker blood. Uh, or Urken conditioning here. Urken and Lice under your control have plus 20% initiative and plus 2 movement. These are both very powerful, but neither of them are things that I think we need to worry about immediately. Giving the Urken plus two movement is not, um, it's not terrible, but I think he's gonna spend some time just like rooted providing his dust bonus here, so. Let's just hold off. We'll just save the resources for the moment. We might actually wanna run a booster. Uh, okay, so speaking of having picked up a lot of resources in this extremely long dust, ex uh, dust eclipse, we have a ton of money. So, this might be a good time to pick up another hero. All ideally, right. ideally we would have... Um, well, apparently Ululani has a, has a level to spend. Um, ideally, we would have a governor for each city. That's where you'd like to be at. Uh, obviously, we will just spend the skill point in this skill, which is not very exciting, but it's on the way to the stuff that actually does stuff. Uh, in particular, you know, all this plus science is what we're thinking. Uh, so two of our cities have governors. We have another city that is ungoverned at the moment. And then on top of that, um, obviously, we have uh, ambition. We would hope to settle the island here. We would hope to settle a little bit more, uh, a little bit more land. I was kind of thinking we'd end up coming down the coast. But if we do that, we don't, we won't necessarily get um, Fakir's benefit on all of our regions. So it kind of makes me want to settle a Raelian, which also has um, adjacency with use. There's a little bit of shared border here so that we can continue getting all this bonus. And Raelian is another one of these volcanic regions, so potentially a lot of strategic resources. It also has a location where we could put a dock and actually level it up. And it also has one of these like clusters of anomalies right next to that. It's a lot of a lot of science and uh, and industry. Not so much food, obviously, in these volcanic regions. But I don't know. I think that's that's uh, maybe a thing for the near future. We're gonna need to pump out some settlers. It's been a little while since we expanded. But I think, I think our empire was like just about the right size at that last empire plan because we could just barely afford the uh, the plan we wanted. Okay. And we haven't really talked about influence like almost at all. We're not doing the normal thing that you have to do to get a lot of influence going, which is building a lot of districts because we're pulling so much influence from our fortresses. If we mouse over this value here, you can see we're getting 29 uh influence per turn from fortresses and a further 5.6 from the center of influence facility which is on one of our fortresses um, so without even thinking about it we just have all that kind of rolling in and it's giving I think maybe the slightest little bit of a false sense of how easy it is to get that resource so let's take inventory of our fortresses real quick we have 
a wine facility here and a vision facility, giving us bonus vision from all of our fortresses. That's cool. Uh, over here we have something that is yet as uh, as yet unrevealed and the die facility, giving us the ability to purchase our Urken abilities. Okay. Uh, over here we have that center of influence facility, which is reducing the influence output of other empires and gaining extra influence for us, obviously. Uh, plus 2% per fortress that we own is actually pretty solid for us, and then the Flat plus 10, obviously, is lovely as well. Uh, and this fortress is now yielding Palladium. This is one of the uh, one of the next tier of strategic resources. So we'll start accumulating that uh, as of the end of the turn here. This one has an unrevealed something and also some glass steel. This one has titanium and two as yet unrevealed. Interesting. Over here, we have a little bit of Moonleaf income. Moonleaf being the, the big science boosting uh, resource. Lots of glass steel. Uh, some emerald income, which, as we've talked about, I don't value very highly. Uh, and then over here, a little bit of adamantium, which is the other tier two strategic resource. So we have a drip feed of the new strategics right away, which I think is pretty good. Um, so the... You said the the emeralds you don't value. Is that just in this particular playthrough, this particular faction, or in general in the game? Like what? Uh, so they give your they give your cities plus thirty percent fortification value, and I just think like that is only useful in like very specific moments, generally. Okay. Uh, that said. I mean, I don't know exactly to what degree the AI takes into account the fortification value of your cities when um, deciding to declare war on you. It might be the case that being better defended makes the AI just, you know, less interested in starting fights. And if that's true, then the Emeralds certainly have that value at least. But generally speaking, like... you. If you have emerald income, a lot of the time you're just going to be letting it accumulate forever, and it doesn't provide enough approval usually to move the needle uh, on that. And so you just like you're just accumulating emeralds and then eventually uh, selling them once you have <laughs> once you have okay. enough. Which is not a very exciting thing to do. Uh, so in Manier, we were thinking about building the industrial megapole. It turns out right now it would only take us six turns to complete it. That sounds he's, pretty good. So he's got pretty decent um, industry outcome, and nobody else has uh, nobody else has begun to attempt it. I think we're gonna yeah we're gonna just go ahead and yeah. drop that. So we have to figure out where we want it to go. Okay, um, walk, walk me through the possibilities here. <clears throat> so we have our we have our cargo docks down. We would like to level up our cargo docks while also grabbing more terrain more territory in general. Um, we also want to level up this industrial megapole. And remember, the way we level up a district is by getting it, uh, getting four other districts adjacent to it. So what I'm thinking right now is that building the megapole down here grabs us two more water tiles, which are valuable because of the docks, uh, and creates a situation where the docks have three districts adjacent to them and the megapole has two already. And then we just kind of build outwards to the side. Okay. There is this um, there is this anomaly up here, and then a couple more big tree anomalies in this direction. And I had initially intended to sort of build the city upward, but if we build this district here and then another one over there will be simultaneously leveling up our cargo docks and grabbing five additional water tiles, which have unusually high value for us because we're Morgar. And then on top of that, even higher value because of the cargo dock. And it puts us in a really good position to be able to level things up quickly. I think, I think this is the play. Okay. Even more industry. And it's very unlikely that we're going to get sniped on that, I think. Six turns is a is a pretty quick build. We waited quite a while to start it, but six turns is a quick build. All right, let's talk about 
uh, our people here. Oh, okay. So we can see a green fungal bloom growing over these ruins, which tells us that the last player is, um, I've forgotten their name already. The fungus faction, Makara. Okay. So we don't know exactly where they are, but we know what they are. And now we have a, a pretty good idea of like the overall diplomatic situation of the game. We can we can see most people's borders and get kind of a sense of what's going on. Uh, and at this point, since we know so many people, let's take a look at the diplomatic relations menu. Okay. So in addition to... Um, in addition to being the resource that we use to push our empire plans, uh, influence is the resource of diplomacy. When we offer deals to other players, resor um, our uh, influence determines how many terms we can put on the table. Um, and to some degree, how complex the, the deal can get, obviously. We don't really have much in the way of diplomatic technology yet. When we get the Diplomats Mance, we'll be a little bit more competent at this. Um, but this is a thing to think about as we're getting into the phase where there's going to be a lot more interaction between players. Uh, we, need, we need influence to maneuver in this space. Uh, one thing we can do right now, though, is we can... Just check everybody else's sort of viewpoint here. So purple only knows pink and us, and we're all all Cold War to each other. Obviously, the Draken know everybody, and they're all feeling pretty neutral. Okay, blue and red are at war. That seems to be the, the only war that we're aware of at the moment. So that's interesting. Um, Red's a pretty warlike faction, the uh, the Broken Lords. Mm -hmm. They're not and then super, super close to each other. Um, the cultist city is well defended. It starts with, if I remember correctly, it starts with some extra militia and maybe extra fortification. Um, but it's hard to say what the deal is here. I, I would actually really like to get a little bit more vision in this area. That might be a thing worth sending a unit to do. Uh, so that might influence our movement decision with this unit. Now the 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 mush the my how you pronounce my Kara. What's the name? The my Kara. Um... The, are they less warlike? Are they friendly? Are they a bunch of fun guys? Uh, they can be a little... Okay, we see red settling out here. They can be a little unpredictable. Uh, I, I don't... I, they don't... In my experience, they don't have as strong of a character in okay. the same way. Like, every time, I, every time I have a Broken Lord as a neighbor, I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta make sure we have swords on that border. Uh, I don't know. The Makara, it's hard to say. Sweetie. Yeah. Sweetie. Are, are they fun, fun guys? guys. Yes. No, I heard you. <laughs> you didn't laugh. That's correct. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Don't go that way. Shoot. I uh, <clears throat> had a little hand twitch there and accidentally told my naval units to go in the wrong direction while I was looking around and making sure that we don't know where Wervelin is. We've seen the names of a lot of ocean regions. We sure have not seen Vervelin. Which is one we want to find. Yeah, we have to search all the ruins in that region in order to move our faction quest forward. So I think our plan is to sail sort of like west along the coast here. Mm hmm. Or not Wervelin. This is Wervelin. Yarrow. Yeah. Yarrow is the one we're looking for. Sorry. I, I'm, I, I, I'm looking right at the words and just saying the wrong words. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll try to figure that out. That's our highest priority right now. And you, I don't know what you're doing. When we Go have grab a moment. this movement conflux, grab it, and then get back in the water. What, what's up? When you when we have a moment, what? I wanted to ask you a general four X question, but like when you're not. Like in the middle of a mm -hmm. decision making. Okay, I think I think I, th I think the now is that time. Okay, um, so 
you, you said we're going to be entering the phase of the game where we're expecting a lot more interaction with the players. Is this a common thing with the genre that the early game there is not as much? Because I know with Civ, it took us a while to start getting into it with the other uh, civilizations, and there was that game you were playing that uh, you have me play a little bit of that's like a fantasy resource gathering game. You know the one I'm talking about? No, how could I possibly know the one you're talking about from that description? <laughs> uh, I I bounced off it a bit. I, okay, it, again. <laughs> Um, you played it for your channel within the last, like, you played it recently. Nouns. Like, maybe a couple months nouns. ago. I need nouns. I'm trying to remember the name. Are you, are you um, against the Storm? Are you talking about Against the Storm? No, not Against the Storm. Um, there's a lot of hex grid based battles. And different kinds of magic are generated by different units. Oh, um, Songs of Conquest. Okay, so you have me play that as well, and like, it, from what I played, I never got in contact with the other "quote unquote" player factions. So, is it common within Forex and Forex adjacent spaces for things to to not start necessarily? Uh, do you know what I'm asking? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yes, it would have to be right. Like, you've seen you've seen already at this point. You've seen enough of these to like. Sometimes you have a close neighbor, but like the initial part of the game is about exploration and expansion. And you can't do that if you don't start kind of by yourself. Yeah. That makes sense. So yeah, there's the there's sort of this like there's there's this initial phase of look around your initial starting spot, try to pick out some city locations, and if you have a close neighbor, there is potentially some competition. At that point, but like the the age of diplomacy is later when you've met people. Okay. Uh, so we accidentally did a legendary deed because we had, uh, upon the opening of the new age, we we accidentally already owned one adamantian facility and one palladian facility. We are the first player to produce at least one of each of the four strategic resources, and so we have been gifted an additional eighty adamantian. Thanks, Legendary Deeds. We did it. Um, we should also look at, like, what what else What else is out here? Uh, be the first to have a city's total income from primary trade routes of at least 20 dust. Uh, yeah, we didn't actually talk about trade routes, but since we have cargo docks now, we have trade running. Uh, and trade routes in Endless Legend are quite passive. This is, this is uh, the case with a lot of, like, early, uh, earlier 4Xs where you just build, like, the trade route building, and then the game kind of manages it in the background. Um, trade being a little bit more, more like, active is a... I, f I feel like is a more modern sort of thing. Uh, the other legendary deeds that are open, because somebody got to Era 3 already, are... Be the first to have at least 30 units at the same time in order to gain the Intelligence Core technology, which just gives all of your units better health regen. Uh, and, of course, another... Uh, Another fancy building that requires the higher level strategics to build. Also, there's one up here that looks like we've already completed. Ah, uh, be the first to have an empire approval value of 100. So when somebody pushes into era four, we would like to be at 100 already so we can just snatch this up. How many eras are there again? Uh, there are five normal eras and then a sixth era that just has these sort of like very abstract technologies that dramatically improve uh, your numerical output in various ways. Uh, and um, these these final ones, you can see they all say they are counted for the scientific victory. Uh, the way you win a scientific victory in um, Endless Legend is by researching five of the six endgame technologies. Okay. At which point you are so powerful that, you know, it, it would be trivial to end the game in a, in a variety of ways. 
Uh, hey, I forgot to actually hire a governor last turn. I was talking about it, and then I didn't actually do it. So we should probably make sure that actually occurs. All right, we were running around over here breaking volcano formers up, right? Yes. There is still at least one volcano former for that quest right over there. Is that the only one that's left? Yeah, two of them are gone already. So... We do not move very swiftly on land. And I think it should be noted the, um, the Alagi here, they are a very, very fast moving. Their basic unit is a cavalry unit. Uh, and when winter comes, they're only going to get faster as we get slower. So if they want to hunt down and kill our scout, they're going to be able to. Oh, right, they have fire ships. Okay, let me uh, plan to get back into safe waters as quickly as possible at the beginning of the next turn. Uh, and our hero can scoop up some pearls over here. I'm not sure exactly what I want to be doing with Iraqi right now. I guess we have... Um, we have areas down here to search. We can keep him separate, and if, if he's needed for the Navy uh, for combat reasons or whatever, we can just teleport him up there. Okay. Uh, we expect we expect winter is probably coming really soon. Uh, so I do want to build um, more settlers, but before we do that, we have access to these advanced science buildings. I think... These should be a priority in our various cities. And then also, the capital still has a destroyed minor faction village in its region. Let's rebuild that for them. Convince them that we're not so bad after all. Do I want to pop the spices? I think we're probably going to wait because it's going to be winter soon. One to 12 turns. In theory, it's possible that we could get a full 10 turns of value out of this. But I really do think like winter uh, winter is going to fall like next turn, I bet. Usually the end of the eclipse uh, is followed by the beginning of winter pretty closely. All right, so let's have a let's have a move order issued for this guy as well. There are hostile neutrals in this region, so I kind of want to end the turn on a different uh, in a different region oh end my movement rather in a different region all right as mysteriously as it arrives the dust eclipse and its strange effects that swept Auriga have departed returning the land to normal quote-unquote normalcy some version of normalcy so we're gonna click this move my units right right now button okay uh, food production is back to normal. The volcano formers are dismissed. Somebody got the other one. Uh, we finished our diplomats' mance. Yeah, okay. The land is saved. Well, at least the majority of it. This was probably purple. Got this. Uh, what might have become basalt plains and volcanic lakes is still largely grassland and forest and scrub. Our regans of all races and means are thankful for the intervention, except probably for, you know, the volcano people who wish that the whole world was a volcano. I get it. So Look, I, don't, I don't want that, but I I understand if you really <laughs> care about volcanoes. So now that we know there's not a volcano farmer for us to come after over here, do I still want this unit headed in this direction? Especially since we have reason to think that there's probably other player forces over here. I mean, there's ruins to search. Yeah, I think the plan is still going to be to head over here um, to check the ruins, get on the river, check some more ruins, and kind of like get back to our territory via the inland water. Uh, also, worth noting, the Draken have uh, completed the have an army of 30 units at the same time goal. And so they get the big health regen bonus. That's a little bit scary. Draken units are um, broadly very tough. 
so them having high health regen just means it's going to be like a huge pain in the ass to try to fight them. So I guess it would be best if we never did that. Okay. We are three technologies away from era three. What do we want? Hmm. We're doing really well on our approval levels already. So often, uh, often I really prize the central market as a very powerful approval granting structure. And it does give bonus dust and food as long as the approval of the city it's in is high. But I don't know that it's like critical for the situation we're in. I guess it would be a good idea to pick up the ability to mine terrestrial uh, luxury resources, probably. We never even got the basic food building, and it kind of doesn't feel like super necessary. The public granary is available. Uh, we could also research aquacultural science, which is a building that provides food specifically from water tiles. Uh, obviously, our empire is highly incentivized to grow along the water anyway. Yeah. Uh, there are also some additional industry buildings that we could pick up. It's it's tough to say. You know, honestly, like the seed storage is really powerful. The flat, the the percentage bonus on top of the flat bonus, it is worth a lot, and it's only going to get more valuable as the game goes on. You know, as percentage bonuses do. I think like these might be our three moves. We don't really have a ton of population right now. And that is a thing that is maybe worth fixing. In fact, let's prioritize the, the granary. The granary continues to produce food during the winter, uh, which is not, you know, not as true of the seed storage. So as we're heading into winter, I'm, I'm always a little leery of like researching cultivation as we're headed toward winter because it feels like a, like, a, like a bit of a waste. You could just do that later, right? Um, but that's not true of the granary. Let's get the granary tech and we'll uh, we'll push forward on food from there. Because uh, especially if I'm talking about wanting to build out more districts, you can only build one normal um, borough district in each city per two points of population that the city has. So we're going to need more bodies if we want to um, be geographically expanding these cities out in order to level up our existing districts and stuff. All right, and you're just going to sail down this way. We're going to check out the oceans down here, see if we can't find Euro. All right, uh, we're researching current level, uh, current tier technologies in two turns, and we have even more science income coming in. So if it turns out we can't uh, finish our faction quest because there's something going on with Euro or it's hard to access or whatever, I do think we're in a position where, like, a, a hard shift towards science is probably available to us. Okay. You gotta be a little bit careful, though. Um, we do have a science leader already, and I am absolutely remembering to actually hire <laughs> that governor that we were looking okay. for. Uh, so, Wadeha Hakan is a, an ardent mage, which is a science-focused faction. Has science boost one, which is, like, an okay governing capacity. Industry boost one on a necrophage body, which is very, like, food-focused. It's kind of interesting. Science boost two is just better <laughs> than what I have gone. Uh, we don't really need another Kapaku, do we? I don't think so. Uh, Edra, two copies of Edra the Listener, which is a shame because it's all uh, combat capacities. So... This one has science efficiency. There are two different boosting capacities for each resource. There's efficiency, which improves the amount output by population points that are working on the resource. And then there's boost, which is just a flat, um, a flat amount of the resource per level of the hero. Sometimes efficiency is better. Sometimes boost is better. It just kind of depends on like how the city is specialized and what you're mostly devoting your population to. 
Um, I don't think we really want science efficiency focus now, but if we do end up leaning really hard on um, on this idea in the future, going like super hard science, it would be nice to have a science efficiency three governor. So we might want to just pick this one up and um, and just have her level up slowly. Uh, the downside is that the the Mizari slash Valter heroes, their tree is not like totally amazing. Alchemical Genius gives you extra science from districts, which is not bad. Uh, then you have Escape Artist, which allows the hero to leave besieged cities, which is a thing that ordinarily you can't do. Really rarely comes up. Um, but it's a good way to prevent a hero from getting, uh, you know, beat up or captured in combat. And then you have, like, bonus defense, bonus fortification recovery. Again, like, the a fair amount of the Valter stuff is, like, specifically about surviving enemies trying to siege you down. So you know, No blockade penalty on the basic resources when the city is under siege. You can see a lot of, uh, a lot of focus there. But Science Efficiency 3 is kind of cool. You know what? I think we're going to grab her. We're going to start leveling her up. I, I don't think any of our options here are, like, amazing. Okay. But let's get her developing. So we're going to install her in the capital. Uh, so, heroes in cities uh, get the same passive bonus, passive bonus XP per turn as heroes in armies, that is to say, one XP plus one XP for each unit under their command, not counting garrison, like the, the militia, not counting the militia. So if we have units garrisoned in the city, it will help improve um, the XP output of uh, the XP going into these heroes. Uh, but heroes who are governing also receive a portion of the industry cost of any city improvement that's built as XP. So it's nice to install her as we're like just about to finish a couple of like reasonably high level buildings. Uh, and after we finish those, I think it's probably settler time from the capital. Okay. Uh, now that we have our diplomats, Mance, it might be worth trying to negotiate peace. Uh, we're going to have a much easier time exploring these northern oceans if Pink can't attack us. So let's go have a chat with Pink. The the Draken are diplomatically inclined in the first place. They are currently indifferent to us. They don't feel like we're a threat. We're not competing for uh, land at all. So let's see how they feel about peace. Okay. You can see they're a little bit negative on that. A little bit toward the frowny face. Uh, because we are offering a peace deal, we can uh, contribute resources here. And you can see... The different resources we could offer them have they have different value to them. It looks like we have enough adamantium to potentially be able to swing them on that. But also, I like our adamantium. Oops. You, you know who else likes adamantium? Who? Oh. Wolverine. Does he like it, or is he just sort of stuck with it? He's really mad when Magneto takes it away. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. And he lost his notes. Okay, so we can see here, if I give him 62 adamantium, the, the little line is green now, which means it is, it is positive. It is extremely likely he would accept this deal. It's not a guarantee, um, mm -hmm. but it's possible. Uh, making an offer like this has a cost to the person making the offer. It has no influence cost to the person receiving the offer. Um... If we give him more stuff, the deal make the deal more in his favor, he will like us better. But also, you know, we're kind of in a situation right now where... Actually, you know what? Here's a question. Do you have... Yes, it looks like he does... So we, we can trade technologies that we have access to that they don't. Uh, the fact that we can't trade him dock technology means he already has it. It is a good idea to make sure that your... Um, your allies, people you're friendly with, have trade route technologies so that you can, you know, run trade back and forth. Uh, but it looks like he's way ahead of us on that. 
So yeah, I'm just going to make a simple peace offer here. He's into it. Of course he is. The Twelve agree to move from Cold War in favor of your offer of peace. So you can see he is now on the peace tier. Uh, the rules for peace uh, are that we no longer attack our... We can't attack each other in neutral territory anymore. Uh, without obviously breaking the treaty and breaking a treaty... Uh, has an influence cost that is greater the more recently the treaty was signed. Okay. Uh, and we can now run trade between our two empires, which is cool. Uh, to talk about trade really quickly, since we do have a little bit of trade at the moment, uh, you can see we're just running a couple of trade routes between the cities, Forney and Manure, that have docks. Uh, it's a 17 distance route, and it's producing this amount of extra dust and uh, science for us. And this calculation is based on like a couple of things. It's like the distance traveled, the number of regions that you cross, I think, and the dust and science output of the two cities that are being traded between. Uh, and it's just like totally passive. It's just raw resource generation. We're just making 27 extra dust and science and we don't have to think about that. But if we want to optimize these numbers, what we want to be doing is trading longer distances, especially across oceans, especially across oceans that we own, which imparts a, uh, a bonus to the trade route value. Uh, and so being able to run trade with the Draken would be really solid. Unfortunately, uh, we could only trade by water from our cargo docks to other cities that have cargo docks. And right now it looks like he has not built anything on this coast. So uh, we're going to have a hard time getting any trade out of him. But the important thing is we're going to be able to move around in this northern ocean much more safely. We have negotiated a, uh, a cessation of hostilities. I don't know that I want to get involved in any of this noise. I think we're going to uh, not make any diplomatic deals with those players until some of that stuff shakes out. Although, I suppose making a peace deal with Red would mean that we get to scout around here a lot more safely. Let's see, Red's got some uh, some pretty large armies here. Just eyeballing the uh, the stats of his units that we can see. Yeah, these are, like, reasonably well-equipped creatures. I certainly wouldn't want to fight him. Um, there is a diplomatic, uh, like, a positive diplomatic modifier for having friends in common. So if we also make peace with red, it will encourage red and pink to sort of glom okay. together. And we might end up forming a little power block, which... It could be good or could be bad, especially depending on like if they get if they get really close and they decide to exile us from the power block at some point. Um, I think I'm going to not I'm not going to push it. If we end up losing this one scouting mastermind to harassment from red troops, that's whatever. I'm not I'm not going to be heartbroken about that. OK, I think things are going all right here. We, oh, we did a thing. That's right. We had a quest to produce dust in one of our cities, and we sure did that. We have a diplomatic request. Our offer is magnanimous. It is in the interest of Auriga that you accept it. Okay, he would like to exchange our map information. This is probably pretty weighted in his favor, actually. We have vision of a lot of the world. So I'm going to counter-propose. Yeah, you can see he would really like for this to happen. And that might be a really like that allows us to actually uh, ex extract something in exchange here. Uh, so we could try to push through a commercial agreement or a research agreement, which increases the resources generated from trade routes. As we do not currently have any trade routes running, this doesn't feel like it's very valuable. Um, do you have like, can I take cultivation from you? No, he, uh, he values that quite highly. You can see if we added cultivation... It changes the bar to this state, so we would have to give something back, and um, 
you can see he has to pay for the part of the deal that he proposed. If we put more items on the table, we have to pay for those. Um, we have pretty good influence income, but like at the point where we want to be wheeling and dealing, honestly, this might not. We might have to think about focusing on improving that. Honestly, he doesn't have anything that's like really blowing me away. He wouldn't trade any of his techs without us trading something pretty large in response. You'd have to trade back some kind of very significant. Um, I think maybe we just maybe we just actually let him have a deal that's slightly in his favor. He has 21 dust on hand right now. <laughs> I like to, you know, extract some resources or something, but he just like he doesn't have anything. You know what? That's fine. Deal in your favor, friend. All right, let's take a quick look at what we learned. All right, we know where green is. We have a good idea of the shape of this continent. It looks like, actually, honestly, purple and us were probably on a continent by ourselves and the other four players got glommed together because two of them are single city. That's interesting. Mm. So red is probably feeling a little bit pinched. Uh, this is mean. We knew that because we talked to one of the fortresses. There's another ocean region over here that could be Yarrow, maybe? Or Yarrow uh, could be Leadheart? somewhere down here, yeah? Is that not Yarrow right there? The below Vanaran. Well, this is a... This is an, Oh, you know what? I just kind of assumed. Search all the ruins in the ocean, Wervelin, and its neighbor, Yarrow. I just kind of assumed Yarrow would also be an ocean, and I think it usually is. But yeah, I guess there's no reason that it couldn't be a land. I was just not even looking at the land regions because we're ocean, because we ocean here. Well, let's redirect this scout up in that direction, and maybe it is worth negotiating safe passage with Red. Oh my god, it is going to take you forever to get up there. At least there's a there's a river running through Yarrow that will help a little bit. Uh, and he does have proper roads constructed, so that'll help too once we get over here. Uh, but yeah, no, you're right. That is Yarrow, and it absolutely is neighboring Wervalid, and I was just only looking at the names of the ocean regions. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Yep. I appreciate that. I did my part. I appreciate the help there. Uh, yeah, so just as I thought, this is the purple unit that destroyed the volcano former. Uh, we found 70 more dust. Hooray. All right, and now we can get on the uh, the river here and actually move at a reasonable speed. And also find ourselves 50 more dust. I kind of want to veer out here and grab this ruin as well. Turns out there's a lot of stuff we haven't searched yet. So... Now we no longer really need to search this area, but there's still ruins and stuff to grab over here, and we don't have anything else to do with this navy. So I think the plan uh, the plan remains here. We're going to push into this region. We're going to maybe take these fortresses. If Pink's not grabbing them. Okay, you just want me to talk to other fortresses. We're kind of on the way to that. We're, we're working on that. We'll see if we can take that one over in a non-combat fashion. Because it does reward some resources in addition to control of the, the fortress itself. Alright, Dells has finished its advanced science building and... It's actually all caught up on building output here. Uh, we can build a dust dredger, which gives us bonus dust from the river, but only during the summer, which obviously is uh, not... 100% ideal right at this moment. I kind of want to just put a project in the queue that's not going to take very long here, though, because um, we're about to finish the granary, and obviously that will be a significant priority. Yeah, let's just give the city something to do until that granary research finishes. All right, all that stuff is continuing apace. 
and I kind of want to wait until um, there periodically the market will like partially refresh. Um, I kind of want to wait to hire another hero, even though we do have the dust to do so, until we see some some new blood. Because I'm not wild about the governor options that we have available at the moment. Maybe I should try to negotiate peace with purple. I think it's like we're not really competing for living space now, but um, if I want to take anything other than just Raelian, we're going to be border to border. Mm -hmm. It might be nice to get a friendship going before that. What would you what would you say to Peace? Okay, you're not like super into it. What can I buy you off with? Well, it turns out everybody would love the fancy new strategic resources that they don't know how to mine themselves. Shocking. Uh, he would do it for most of our wine supply, which obviously is not something I'm super excited about. Um, what about a technology? What if I taught you something? I don't really want to teach you to be more competitive at science, especially if that's like kind of our thing. Giving him access to the resources and stockpiles section in the marketplace is a it's hard to predict the outcome of that. Because, like, it could be the case that he will then be selling off excesses. And, you know, th this could have uh, benefits in, like, lowering prices for us on certain things. But also, you know, he might buy up all the stuff we care about. It's really difficult to predict how harmful that will be. I think I'm going to do it, though. Technology trades are, res are uh, influence expensive. Maybe it would be better to do it with just, like, I could just give him some of the adamantian. It's pretty influence cheap to make a gift of of a resource and like we just don't just don't give them very much. I mean obviously the biggest danger of giving someone strategic resources that the, is that they will then use them to build units that will kill you. But, but we're making friends, right? They would never turn on us. Can't imagine. How could it possibly occur? Yeah. Mostly I'm just like worried he's running a lot of units around <laughs> like near our territory. Okay, here comes the winter. You can see all those pearls spawn in. Alright, our wine has run out. Absolutely reactivate the wine. Never let the wine booster fail. Uh it's true, I did not sign enough peace trades with the other major factions. I kind of forgot that we had this quest. Um, it's fine. I don't care about that. That's the pacification of, like, these Ursus villages down here or something. The spices would have been cool, but we don't need them. Alright, the dark season has begun. So, as before, reduction in food from food terrain, reduction in dust from dust terrain. We're moving slower. We're seeing less. In addition, uh, it is cheaper to uh, assimilate people into the Empire right now, and neutral armies are stronger. Not a big deal. The part where everybody loses movement speed is much more significant than uh, than any of the other stuff for us at the moment. All right, you can just barely make it over here. We found a quest. You are following indications drawn from local legends that spoke of loot and treasure in heavily guarded ruins. It seems, however, that someone else has beaten you to the booty. So there is uh, some armies roaming in Oleran. One of them has my 25 wine. But also, I have wine. Where's Oleran? Oh, boy. Do you? Hmm? I said you have a lot of wine. Oh, I get it. Cause, because I'm whiny. I see. I follow. I follow. I'm with you. And I'm upset about this character assassination. All right, I'm a little worried about those neutrals. So this is two level two boarding vessels. All of our um, all of our naval units have seen enough combat to level up as well. So we're at like 43 attack, 39 defense against their 37 attack, 44 defense. 
So they're a little bit, you know, they're a little bit less likely to hit us for full damage, but probably we're looking at both of us hitting for full damage most of the time, as our, our numbers are pretty well matched. We certainly have more HP than they do. Now remember, we do have the ability to just mind control a neutral unit, but right. it costs influence, and then each army that you're maintaining that is Cat's Pod uh, has a significant influence upkeep cost, and we just spent a bunch of influence. And the next Empire plan's not soon, but, you know, we do want to be stockpiling for it, especially since we're talking about probably having, like, at least five cities by that point. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily want to just be burning 40 yeah. plus influence on nothing. All right, let's, before we go building any granaries, I suppose this is a good time to build settlers. And if we're going to build settlers, maybe we want to first upgrade our settler design. Because we are talking about moving them a little bit more than we have in the past. Uh, there is a yeah, an accessory that you can put on a unit that gives it bonus movement. Uh, and if we, you know, increase the cost of the settler to such a degree that it costs like one extra turn to build, but then it gets to where it was going two or three turns faster. Yeah, that I think that's sounds good. I think that's a reasonable trade off. So I think both of these cities are going to pump out a settler real fast and then and then we can worry about the granary. Actually, geez, do I want Dells to do that? Maybe we want with the taking seven turns to build it'll be faster to just build two settlers in Forney. Forney is so close to another another population point. Hold on. Can I, yeah, we'll get one more body in one turn. So what I'm going to do is put one turn of building in toward this granary. And then we'll swap this to the bottom of the queue and start working on the settlers. But we'll have an extra body to do it with. Uh, and here we're just going to go to the granary straight away. Let's start pushing some population in these cities. Uh, winter is 1 to 13 turns, so it's a fairly short winter at least. And honestly, it's not the um, the new effect is not that bad. I think we're we're doing okay. We're managing to survive the uh, the vicissitudes of a hostile planet. All right here. A somewhat hostile planet. All right, so these people wanted to meet our hero, right? This was this was another yeah. one of those burning, uh, burning quests. Let's go ahead and parlay. Yep, they did spawn. They did spawn the ambush army. Uh, now you understand their ardent words. It is a trap. Destroy their fire ships, and in doing so, we will learn the design for the fire ship. That's something, and also control the fortress, obviously. Where did it go? The they spawned that army and then it ran it ran away from me. Three three fire ships is a lot of fire ships. Like you our our this. guy our guy is a very good combat unit, but honestly, I don't, that might not be a good idea to pursue them. Hmm. All right, you're headed for Yero. Let's grab some stuff from some ruins here. Um, now, a thing we should talk about, mm -hmm. pearls in other players' territory. Red feels like the pearls that are in Red's territory are Red's property. Okay. If, if we take pearls from their territory, uh, there will be diplomatic consequences for that. So I am intentionally avoiding grabbing these like easy pearl groups. Uh, because I am afraid to piss Red off at this moment. And I am definitely, again, thinking about whether we want to just, like, try to negotiate a peace treaty. We could we could put a lot of, you know, diplomatic pressure on the game in general. Here, and just like, what if, what if we were all friends? So that's not 
too bad. They don't hate the idea. And apparently they're short titanium. Pro they're probably using titanium in their war. Would be my guess for uh, for what the what this amount of desire represents. And we certainly can afford to trade some titanium away. We're not using anywhere near this amount. All right, I'm just going to negotiate some peace over here as well. Okay, friends with everybody, except you. Good luck, Hakub. I hope you figure out a way to survive the thing that's about to happen to you. Uh, so once again, we're going to plan to just move out of this region so we don't get jumped by the minor faction that lives in the region. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and stuff's building. We're going to get our... Uh, going to get our special building in man you're there pretty soon and i have to decide whether i think this is actually a good idea well you know what we have a bit sorry we have a battle let's resolve the battle we knew this was going to happen <clears throat> so obviously we would prefer to be in a position where they can't quite attack and also i probably don't want the most injured unit furthest forward Now, it would be cool if we could draw them into the lightning area, but I'm a little worried about my own troops ending their turn in the lightning because they're stupid. Mm. So we could try to do a thing where we, we start up down here and then we move west and try to draw them forward. So if they want to fight us, they have to they have to stop in the lightning. I'm going to I'm going to try it. I'm going to let's see if we can get a little cute thing. So they move first. My guess is they're both just going to move into these uh, into these seaweed spaces. This is probably not going to work, is my is my feeling. But we're going to try it because it would be fun. Okay. You maybe maybe don't move on the first turn. Yeah, actually, just stay there. Gosh, I haven't had seaweed in a while. Oh. He just stopped in the lightning of his own accord. What a curious maneuver. <clears throat> well, what, you know, the one thing that's smart about this is that it means he has the ability to move up on us really quickly. Uh, you focus there. Kind of thought that was what was going to happen, but I had hopes. Uh, because our sub... Wow, never mind. I was going to say, because our sub is still submerged, um, its defenses should be rated as pretty high, and as such, it should not be a problem that it just got attacked. But then, uh, boy, it sure did, sure did take a lot of damage anyway. Okay, that turn, the defense is held. And you see, when you're dealing with stuff like this, with... Um, terrain that wants to destroy you, you need to be very specific with your units about where they can and cannot move. And then I just move into the lightning space anyway on the map, because I'm dumb. As soon as battle was over, I forgot about it. What I was thinking about was whether or not I wanted to move to the Pearl, and I think we're gonna not, because it's a little close to Pink's territory, and I just don't, I don't want to do anything antagonistic, you know? Trying to stay friendly here. I'm trying to yeah. be a pal. All right, Forney got its bonus point of population, so we're just going to keep the granary in the cube, but we're going to shuffle it down to here. And let's just let people build. So the question, do I want to warp Iraku out of here? That would be the way to escape this. Just have him... Have him jump. So he currently has 107 defense and 91 attack. He's going to do a lot of damage, and these fire ships do relatively poor damage, but they are going to set his ship on fire. And he hates that. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's his, like, one weakness, his personal, there's a real pet peeve there. I think we're going to try to fight it. Okay. 
All right, so here we have the completion of the industrial megapole, making Manure probably one of the most productive cities on the planet. Pretty fancy stuff. Uh, yep, some of your ships took damage due to lightning, because you're a big idiot. Wow, that was a lot of damage. Okay, everybody get out of the weather. And here, you know, we can we can rest in this fog bank as we go on to uh, to chat with some more fortresses. Uh, you can just keep heading toward Yarrow. Try to grab this ruin on the way. Uh, oh, we have failed to complete the quest of warm reception. Did somebody else attack? Ah, blue attacked the blue took the fortress while we were dealing with the fire ships, uh, and this fortress has also been taken over. Okay, well that complicates things. All of a sudden, our options are less clear. Red wants a map exchange. At this point, that must be entirely in their favor. We're not going to get anything out of that, right? Yeah. What they know about the world. And they don't even value this highly enough to give us technology about it. And no, I'm just going to not. We're, we're not going to do that. That is entirely to their benefit. All right. So the city of Manure, you can see our one trade route marked out here. Uh, the city of Manure, I think this is this is time to like catch up on some buildings. We haven't made our alchemy workshop yet. We'll get our, you know what, granary first. Get some of this stuff out real quick, and then we'll start building the uh, the burrows to expand our other stuff here. We'll level up the ocean district first. So every time we build a we build a district out, of course, we're claiming all the tiles adjacent to it uh, into our into our exploitation area. Uh, this will also this burrow being built will also level this up. It will also incidentally make our museum of Riga have three districts adjacent to it. So that's easy enough to level up as well when we want to just build something there. And building a district here will also put four districts adjacent to the uh, to the city center so that would level up at the same time. Uh, a, a, a nice triangle shape gets you uh, level one districts on the corners and level two districts in the inner the inner parts of the sides which is pretty efficient and it's a good shape to build for if you don't think you're going to get make the city any bigger than that. Uh, so yeah, this is this. What is this? Oh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't actually press the move button. So that minor, minor faction army did attack our mastermind. Uh, we would not survive that battle under any circumstances. Now we're just going to move away from them. Generally speaking, neutrals won't attack you if you're not in their region. Hopefully that holds true here. <laughs> All right, so our cities are building important stuff, and they suspect we're going to win this. Let's see if we can manage it. So we have three range. I just want to start opening fire right away. There's not really a lot of weather to take advantage of in here. There's like a single fog tile. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna... There's not really a strategy for us here other than shoot them a lot. And you can see it's not like a horrible strategy for us. But you are on fire. So as long as we're on fire, we're losing 10% of our life every round. Um, that does not stack up. Like we, we won't get multiple fires from multiple fire ships. Being on fire is a binary state. <laughs> you either are or are not. Which I guess is sort of like real life. Uh, yeah. Oh, come on. I rolled a zero on their attack. I mean, our, I will say this. Okay, I should probably be moving around a little bit because right now we are suffering some morale problems because I am a ranged unit with a ton of enemies adjacent to me. Plus, I can be minimizing the number of attackers a little. Pretty frustrated by that. Yeah. 
the um the thing where our attacker where our unit just dealt no damage for no reason on one turn yeah wow twice in fact uh really really hurts it is hard i think to attack when you are on fire that's coward shit uh so we just burned down that's fun i was right i should have just i should have just bailed all right well iraku is injured what oh, do we, okay so he's what not do, dead what do we do about this uh, we can wait 20 turns for him to heal naturally, or we can use the magic of dust to restore him to health. Uh, the health cost here will decrease proportionately as the timer runs down, but honestly, at this point in the game, 260 dust is no problem for us. We're just going to resurrect him at full health, and I kind of think just put him back in the water, like... Right, our other our other navy's doing just fine. Let's just create army on city and get back get back down there. So now there's just this hostile fire ship army that is sailing around, uh, and I don't love that. But I do love the fact that it looked like the listening post is um, unguarded. And we, we don't have a peace treaty with Blue, so I'm probably just going to come down here and take this, is my plan. All right, we are two turns from entering Era 3. That is, that is where we are headed here. So, Manure is pumping out those improvement buildings as fast as possible. We do not have a tremendous amount to do on these turns. Should be pretty fast. Uh, it's true, we did not defeat the Skyfin. Somebody else probably did. Uh, Ululani Rawi has been gaining um, gaining XP. You know, build being, being the governor of a city that builds a wonder is worth a lot of experience points. Alright, stuff's getting built. Our ships are continuing to be assaulted. There are so many neutral navies. Okay, so this group has a fire ship in it as well, which I'm surprised by. And we're damaged enough that if we retreat, we're just going to lose most of these units. I remember retreating damages every unit in the army for 50% of its max HP. The sub would survive. The sub will take 36 damage. But we'll lose both of the fours. That said, I think if we fight this, we lose everything. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this retreat button. And then we're going to apparently just fucking bail. I mean, the good news is this unit is now um, effectively stealthed. A, sub, a submersible by itself is only visible to units that are adjacent to it. So they would have to stumble into us or have some kind of detection technology. Oh, hey. Pink is sieging one of Red Cities. That's interesting. That's that's new information. They weren't at they weren't at war before, right? I don't remember. I no, uh, Pink was at uh, Red was at war with Blue. I wonder if this I wonder how this happened. It could be the case that Blue just bought Pink in. You know, sometimes the, the cult can accumulate a lot of resources very quickly in the early game. And they, they might have just, you know, paid for help. That's very interesting and something we probably need to keep a, a sort of a close eye on. Pink is nominally a friend, but their empire is pretty large already. And if they uh, like are able to consume the only player on their continent who can expand, I worry about how powerful they will end up. Hmm. Yeah, that could be a big problem, actually. And hey, that's the sound of us having done it. Up. 
out of here so that we don't get quote unquote accidentally found out by the AI. So I don't trust them. All right, so we've entered a new research era. Era three, the age of enlightenment. We've revealed adamantian and palladian and a whole host of luxury resources on the map here. More complex empire plans are available. All kinds of cool stuff. Uh, it looks like this siege is going to end in the defeat of the pink army. Most of their units are dead already and red has brought in uh, pincer force. But they did get this city's fortification almost all the way down. This is a pretty closely fought battle. <laughs> Don't mind us. We're just, uh, just passing through, y'all. Uh, our Moonleaf booster has run out, and unfortunately we can't afford to rerun it. Uh, we have discovered some sources of Quicksilver nearby, but uh, no sources of the new strategic resources in our current lands. That island we're planning on taking over has a Palladian deposit. Uh, this is a thing in this game. The, the later resources are much rarer. Um, and to some extent, this is true in a lot of 4Xs. I don't know that it's universal, uh, but it's a thing to be aware of for sure in a lot of them. Um, you saw in Civ, there was like plenty of oil and aluminum, yeah. but you know, it's, sometimes it's just not distributed in a way that's helpful to you because you didn't know where it was in the early game. Um, but here, yeah, the second tier resources are quite a lot rarer than the first tier, and the third tier are, are even rarer still. So this is definitely a thing that motivates some competition, some settling competition in the mid-game. It's like the, you know, the five sources of adamantium on the planet get revealed, and it's like the people who have access to that are going to be heavily advantaged over the people who don't. We have, like I said, a drip feed from our fortresses, so... Yeah, I mean, we definitely want to get her ale. That just became truer. Uh, I see some lone ships over here. Okay, but they're fire ships, not settlers on the ocean, which is what I was worried about. All right, you just continue down this way. We're going to see what we can do. Uh, notice this fortress got reverted to neutral control. Blue is not able to hold it. Okay. Manure's caught up on science. We're getting our uh, getting our burrows put out. Yeah, I think our we, we're in an, in an ascending state right now. Things are going very, um, very well for us. Everybody else seems kind of busy with their own squabbles. We did lose most of our navy. That's a downside. But we will have the ability to rebuild Manure. Like I said, Manure is becoming an extremely productive city. It's 171 industry output, which makes it more productive than our other two cities combined by quite a bit, actually. Um, we're about to gain a couple more cities. We have the money to hire a governor for at least one of them right away. Like, we are, we are here in a moment of expansion, and I think it's going to put us in a pretty powerful position. So that is going to be where we are calling it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, we are going to spread our... Uh, what's an orange condiment? Marmalade? We're going to spread over the surface of this planet like a like a goopy mar marmalade. Is marmalade yeah, we'll orange? See you then. Are you being helpful? <laughs> marmalade, marmalade can be orange. You can have an orange marmalade. Okay, there we go. You heard Amabel. That's a good thing that I said, and we're all happy I said it. Come back next time for the spread, and we'll see you then. I love it when you spread, sweetie.